for the ratepayers and for their time, I'm going to suggest as a commissioner that it's 105 and this technical difficulty should not happen again. I would suggest you start the meeting, Mr. Vice President, and let's move forward. I can hear you fine. Okay, we'll start the meeting. It sounds like <clears throat> it might be on your end, Rick, because uh, we can log in on this side from uh, uh, a phone. So maybe you can play around with your computer and see. Uh, see if you can that, that's what I, that's what I've been doing, uh, Mr. Vice President, uh, to to see if there's anything on my side that I could do, and there there is not. I, I've been here for a half hour pre, uh, so. Go ahead. Okay, we can hear you. So, um, and then just for the record, uh, when we zoom in, we we're, we have to record an address from where you're at. So, if you want to just state that an address for the record. I can give you an address, but I really question the fact of the matter of this. If it's a private address in a home resident residence where I'm at, uh, you know, I I don't care. Uh, but I would raise the question: one, yeah. two, two. 35 323rd Avenue, Princeton, Minnesota, 55371. Yeah, I, I understand the question. I have the same one every time I've zoomed in and they want that too. But so I'm sorry, that was 2235. I'm not going to repeat it. I said it very clear. Okay. okay. Thank you. Yeah, we got it. We got it. Um, all right. So uh, I'll call the meeting to order. Uh, roll call. Uh, since not everybody's here, we will uh, do the roll call out loud. So I'll start. Uh, Dan Dan Erickson. Yeah, Edmund. Rick. Via Zoom, I'm here. Okay. Uh, approval of agenda. Uh, Mr. Vice Chair, I do have a request to add okay. an item to the agenda, uh, 6G service territory negotiations. Okay. 6, 6G service territory negotiations. To, uh, Mr. Butcher would like to add to the agenda. Is there anything else? Uh, Rick, do you have anything? Uh, in fact, I do. Uh, I don't care where you put it, but I would like to uh, create or put wherever you guys choose to put it in communications and transparency with verbal communication. I can't see you. I can't point to anything. That's what I want on the agenda to add. Thank you. Communications. Communication slash transparency. Okay. Slash vocal communications in the last 90 days. Okay. I would say six F. Six. Are you? We have six eight, F. Six eight. Six, six, eight. Well, that's six H. Um, Mr. Edmonds, do you have anything? I have not. Okay. I'll entertain a motion. The agenda has been uh, amended. Okay, I'll second. All in favor, signal by saying aye. 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 Uh, motion carries 3 0. Um, is there any public comment? Would you have anything, Mr. Burton? I do not. Okay. Uh, we'll move on to consent agenda. I'll entertain a motion to approve that. I will move approval of a consent agenda. I'll second. We have a motion and a second to approve consent agenda. All in favor signal by saying aye. 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 I oppose. Okay, motion carries with two yeas and one nay. 
Uh, move to report. Uh, yeah, all the reports are in your packets. Unless anybody has any questions. I, I do have a question uh, back to the public comment. Was there any action taken uh, on changing times of meetings? Or was it just noted as it was explained or agreed to? Uh, as far, no, there was no action taken. Um, well, the comment that you made, Commissioner Erickson, was that you acknowledge the comment. Correct. Is, is the commission going to act on a request of such matter, or is it just acknowledged and we move move on? Yeah, I just acknowledge the request that we did. You know, that I, we did. I totally understand that. Commissioner I Erickson, I totally understand that. I'm just asking, is there any action going to be taken on it? I, um, we can we can take a vote on whether we want to do that. I guess if you if if you would like. Well, yeah. I, it, it's not what I like. It's it's what this public person at the meeting asked for. Are we going to say no? Or are we going to say yes? You you noted on it and accepted, but what's the what's the reality of that question? Mr. Vice Chair, if I may, uh, just to, to add some information to it. Uh, again, uh, the question was asked from the EDA when I gave a presentation on the utility. Um, <clears throat> the question was asked if, if the commission uh, would, would has talked about it or would consider it. Uh, afterwards, I did follow up with the EDA on a question and I did point, and, and the question was phrased in a way of, you know, even if it was once a year, that would be nice. Mm -hmm. um, I did follow up and mention that we do do a joint meeting with the city council once a year mm -hmm. uh, at their work session, right. uh, which is more in the evening, which right. would, would accommodate that. Um, didn't get any response back after sharing that additional information. Sure. Also, it might be nice if, they, if the EDA would do a meeting during the day instead of in the evening. So people who have busy evening schedules yeah. you know, I mean, that yeah. could do that once a year yeah. too. You know? So I just wanted to share that, yeah. you know, I, I, sure. I did follow up and, and mention that we, that the it's commission- It's vice chair, it's vice chair. Ms. Butcher, can I address you? Okay, yeah, I mean, yeah, what can I help with? On the subject, why weren't we notified of the follow-up of that information? Because it certainly extends a different comment or feeling uh, of that whole question. Uh, if they're satisfied with that, then I want to have to ask my question and greater communication with you, with the other commissioners would have been really welcomed. Um. <laughs> Yeah, at the last meeting when I mentioned that uh, there was that public comment, I did state that I was going to be following up with them, stating that the commission does have an, an evening meeting once a year when they do the joint meeting with the city council, uh, which I then- you, you didn't extend the, the comments that you just ex expanded now on what the reality or comment back to you was, that would have been greatly appreciated in the packet. So then we won't even have this conversation because there's an understanding. Okay. Okay. Is Better there, communication, is, sir. Is there anything else? Uh, uh, any other questions on the report? No, okay. Seeing none, we'll move on to the regular agenda. Uh, 6A safety provider selection. Uh, yes, Mr. Vice Chair, members of the commission. Um, we, uh, uh, you know, we did get the renewal for our MMUA safety training. Um, there were some changes to the contract, which uh, gave the uh, Michelle, the city administrator, and I uh, wanted to take some time to just kind of evaluate our different options. We talked to bunch of different firms um, ended up finding a, another firm that does a, a full service uh, safety training program. Uh, and after we did a, a comparison and in consultation with the city, we, we came to a consensus that 
we feel that safe assure is uh, the best way to do it. Uh, so in your packets is a copy of their proposal. Uh, the city council did approve it last Thursday night. Uh, so this would just be an approval for, for our portion of it. And we're asking uh, the commissions uh, for the commission to make a motion and approve safe assure as our safety trainer for uh, going forward. Okay. Are there any questions on, on this? I would just add that the city council uh, had no discussion even on the matter. We were very well aware, I think, by staff, and uh, I think it was the right way to go. Well, we felt it was the right way to go. All right. So I'll entertain a motion to accept memo 23 36. I will make that motion. Is there a second? I'll second it. There's a motion and a second on memo 2336. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor signal by saying aye. 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 Okay, motion carries 3 0. Uh, 6B, 7th Avenue Reconstruction Project, memo 23 37. Uh, yes, Mr. Vice Chair. This is in regards to the 7th Avenue Seesaw 4 project that the city has uh, taken the lead on and working with both the county uh, as well as the utility to do a full reconstruct uh, sewer water main replacements. Uh, uh, and I had shared the feasibility report with the commission earlier, given that there is a cost element to it for us, uh, along with some engineering work. Um, I felt that it was uh, important for the commission to uh, approve that report as we continue to move forward on that construction. Uh, so I'm just asking for uh, adopt or a motion to approve that report and uh, continue working on that project. You have cost estimates that are in there. There's no you know, just to give you an idea of those, this, just like with the cap plan, we'll be bringing, as we move along on this, we'll be bringing it in front of the commission, but I think the good first step is to approve the report as kind of our guideline. Yep. I've, I've read the memo. I don't have any questions. Is, is there any other questions on this 7th Avenue reconstruction project? I would just, uh, my question about the command staff on both sides, our side and the they decided uh, they've done some really extensive work in this with the county. Uh, I think it's going to be a fantastic project. It's going to be a long summer, but it's <laughs> going to be a good project. So I, I really commend our leadership for what they've done. We look for a motion to and I will move approval of memo yep. 23 27. All right, we have a motion to approve memo 23 37. Is there a second? I have a question. Okay. With this project, have, when I say have you, I'm referencing Princeton Public Utilities, have you notified all of the people, and I just have to assume that Michelle is there, I can't see her, can't hear, um, of the additional uh, taxation that they're going to experience with this project? I am, I am here, Rick. Um, thank you for your question. Um, the bulk of the project is being paid through a combination. I understand there's a grant. I do understand that. Yep. So I'm not sure where the additional taxation would be coming from. Um, uh, under assessment, the word assessment, not taxation. Um, as of right now, we're not proposing any assessments. If we were to do any type of um, financing for uh, the city's big project, uh, which would be the um, lift station upgrade, it would be a general obligation bond and it would be spread out and be part of the city's overall budget. I'm not anticipating that bonding to occur until 2025 if we pursue that. And as we look forward on our agenda, do you participate in an aggressive percentage increase 
uh, as PUC is doing to supplement those things? I'm not sure what your intention is by the word aggressive. Um, the city has already set its preliminary levy for 2024 at 16%. A lot of that has to do with some personnel and compensation things that we're doing. Um, and we're in the middle of looking at and revising our budget, hopefully downward, um, since we can't go upward. Um, so our budget and any um, additional liabilities in 2020 or 2025 as a result of a general obligation bond payment would be factored into those levy increases, if any, in those out years. So. Thank you, Michelle. Uh, Commissioner Edmonds and Commissioner Erickson, I would like you to take note on the questions that I do ask because it is pertinent. It's not just to run a money uh, a meeting out to do what you do and hammer it down. Tough questions have to be asked and they have to be answered. And we'll continue with this meeting with your uh, okay because there's gonna be some more tough questions coming up. Please understand that. Mr. Vice Chair, if I may, mm -hmm. um, for this project on the water side, uh, we have our cash reserves and capital improvements fund funded. So the intention is to pay for this project for a portion of the project through cash. So I'm not looking at any rate increases on the water side because of this project. In fact, what I propose is a rate decrease on the water side. So I just wanted to make sure that okay. that so, was understood. So just to be clear, there's going to be a proposed maybe, maybe even a rate decrease. Oh, uh, that's what I had. Yeah, that, that's what I had proposed the last public week. utility side. Yeah, that's what that's the way I understood it at yeah. the last meeting. Yeah. And just with the city, just what I heard you saying is there is no proposed increase in tax from the city at this at this moment. Well, I can't, I mean, not related specifically to this project. Okay. I mean, in general, yeah. the city's budget is going to go. That's what we're talking about is this project. Correct. Right? So this project, we're either, we will do one of two things. We will pay cash from capital reserves. Um, and in doing so, we may um, adopt a reimbursement resolution so that if we do decide to sell bonds combining this project these expenses with perhaps some other outlying expenses we have in future out years um, then we will be able to reimburse our cash reserves through bond through those bond payments would any of that affect the puc in any way no because i don't I mean, it will affect any property tax owners, but it's not going to impact the PUC because we've clearly laid out in the feasibility study and the cost of improvements, who is paying for what. So um, the, counties, what... the counties got their portion, we have our portion and you have your portion and we're using a portion of the ARPA funds that we received sure to help offset the cost to the water rate payers for the water main improvements. Okay, yeah. uh, that's the way I understood it. I just want to make sure. Yeah, we are sharing in the, the ARPA fund. Correct. So we're, we're all paying, don't worry about it. Correct, yeah. because we were, we were blessed enough to receive a small cities grant for a portion of the sewer portion. And then, that help cover the rate payers for the PUC then? You know, the, the ARPA funds. The yeah. ARPA funds do. Yeah. The, the, the small cities grant is specific to the sewer improvement portion. Okay. It, it would be incorrect to put forward that the rate payers are getting somehow a, a reduction or anything from this grant. I believe uh, the administrator, Michelle, is correct in saying that the grant went to the project. It's not going to be a reduction into the fees or electrical costs that the ratepayers uh, have each month. Is that correct, Michelle? Correct. So, so the water portion 
the portion of the ARPA funds that we are contributing to the Public Utilities Commission for the water portion will um, alleviate the cost that you would have had to spend out of your capital reserve on the water side. It does not directly impact rates. That's part of the discussion as part of your budget later on. But no, this project in terms of the water reserves that you have, you'll spend less out of your reserves due to the ARPA funds that we're sharing or contributing towards the water portion of the project. But my point was that my, my budget proposal for 2024 is a water rate decrease, not an aggressive rate increase. Okay. Who are you speaking to? I was just sharing information. Okay, is there any other questions on that? Uh, memo 23-37. We, we had a motion. Uh, is there a second? <coughs> yeah, 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 Commissioner Edmonds made the motion. I'll second. Uh, we have a motion and a second to approve memo 2337. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor signal by saying aye. 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 Opposed, I reserve. Aye. I reserve my comment. Uh, opposed, same sign. I reserve my comment. I guess I don't, I don't understand what that means. That means N-A, just like Congress. Okay. Uh, um, I'm, I'm unfamiliar with that, but uh, motion carries to N-A. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I don't know. Um, okay. Well, you can on. laugh about it, guys. You can laugh about it or yeah. put your camera on so we can see each other. Go ahead. I don't, I don't know. I don't, I don't understand it, Rick. So I'm, I'm not saying you're wrong or anything. I'm just saying I, I've never heard it before. So, um, I abstain. How's that? Okay. Perfect. Um, em, employee, uh, 6C employee handbook update. Uh, yes, Mr. Vice Chair. Um, we're having to update the employee handbook to address uh, changes that occurred uh, at the state legislature this year. Uh, primarily that is focused on two items, the cannabis legislation uh, in regards to our drug policy for both, uh, well, it really didn't change our CDL policy because that's a federal regulated program, but for our non-CDLs uh, when it comes to um, uh, our corporate drug policy. So uh, the language that I put in there was really uh, off of the League of Minnesota's uh, recommended language uh, that uh, I got from, that, from them. The second part was the adoption of uh, earned, sick and, earned Safe and Sick Time, ESST, uh, and it was to make the policies uh, very clearly compliant with the, the new state regulations. Uh, we had to add, add in some language as to what is a qualified use of that time. Uh, we ended up just changing our sick leave policy to an ESST policy to match the state rules. Um, and then just a couple other little tweaks uh, here and there. Um, I did send out a red line document to the commission for folks to review. But it, like I said, it's primarily driven by the cannabis and the ESST legislation that was passed earlier this year. So I'm asking for adoption of the 2024 employee handbook that would be effective January 1st. Okay. I have a question. Okay, go ahead, Rick. If the commission is supposed to see the PUC from 30,000 feet above, and that has been explained to me many, many times, and when the manager, Keith Butcher, gets upset when I suggest that something right or left or straightforward or backward, we could communicate better. Um, he quotes to me that I am dictating or and uh, directing staff or him. This to me is asking us to approve what he himself has created. And 
asking our blessing to do so. I do not agree with it. Okay. How are we how are we supposed to approve this when we are not supposed to create any cause or interference with his management because we don't want to micromanage it and then he hands it to us in this format and just adds the changes and say go ahead and staff approves it go ahead who are we can we can we brighten up a little bit can we well, actually look at it uh, i think you uh commissioner schwartz you you do have the opportunity to not approve it if you disagree with it um our job is and, and that's that's why i asked the question in the beginning to explain myself on why so you don't have to explain commissioner erickson why i'm not agreeing with it i'm explaining why i am not but you 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 are okay. the vice chair go ahead okay mr vice chair if i may sure uh Again, uh, the employee handbook would have an effective date of January 1st. I'm presenting it this month to give the commission an opportunity to provide feedback and ask questions. You okay. won't have to approve it today. Sure. If there were questions and uh, a request to do additional research, uh, that's how the process would normally work. And then sure. I would bring it back in December. So that, that's why I worked really hard to get this in front of you at this meeting and not the December meeting. Okay. So you didn't feel under the under pressure to approve something you didn't have time okay. to review. Well, uh, I would recommend that, that we uh, wait till next month to approve it. So Commissioner Schwartz has more time to. Um, it, it's not Commissioner Schwartz, it's all of us. Dan, excuse me for calling you Dan, Commissioner Erickson. Oh, right. You always choose the fact that I look so deep into things and then you wish to argue with me. What I'm stating is we all need to look at this these things deeper before we just hammer it. And that's what I feel that you three have done lately is just hammer it. I think that there should be a zero budget and you grow from there. And what you're doing is just K sera sera. I'm sorry. I said I'm sorry. Go ahead. I'm sorry for interrupting. Yeah, Commissioner Schwartz, I take offense to that. Um, you know, I have my own personal business, and I've had to look into this, these same issues myself. And I have done my research on this. I have multiple hours of research on these updated policies that we're looking at due to the changes. At, from Congress, and uh, so to to sit there and say that I'm just rubber stamping something without looking at it that that's offensive to me. Well, the, the, in the last meeting, uh, you said you didn't ha have time to even look at at uh, the representatives from the office or from water from electric. You didn't have time to read them. It, it, it took 33 seconds to read them. So I don't know what you do watch or what you don't watch or what you believe or what your feelings are until they're explained. Well, I, I take offense to the fact that you assume I don't. Uh, no, you said, you said that you didn't have time to read them. And you can look at the video and see yourself just as Kathy and the manager looked at and said, well, Rick didn't say no, so we just said unanimous and then you made a joke about it and said well two of us unanimous this this coup de car has to stop we got the agenda I forget what day exactly so we've had all weekend to read it yeah I, i'm more than satisfied with the uh the presentation to accept the employee handbook and in fact i'm going to make motion to approve motion for memo 23-38 Okay, we have a motion. Is there a second? I'll second it based on the fact that I have done the research on this. Multiple hours of research. Any further discussion? We have a motion and a second. All in favor, signal by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Aye. Okay, motion carries two to one. Uh, 6D, uh, simple generation update. 
Um, yeah, Mr. Vice Chair. Uh, so I uh, wanted to uh, have a conversation with the commission uh, regarding CIMPA's efforts uh, when it comes to uh, re new resource allocation. Um, CIMPA's been having a conversation lately uh, and, and it's been going back a couple of years as they do uh, what's called their integrated resource planning, which is looking out typically 15 years, making sure that uh, supply meets demand. Um, CIMPA has identified uh, a need for additional capacity requirements. And due to a lot of changes uh, at the MISO level, it, it's been challenging to, to figure out what the rules are, but uh, you know we're all trying to pull together on this. Uh, initially, CIMPA went out and uh, wanted to see if there was any interest within the membership to add additional generation. Um, I respond, uh, after conversations that the commission had, I, I responded with, uh, we're not opposed to it. You know, a lot of it would just depend upon the financials and we want to make sure it works with our community. Mm -hmm. uh, but keep us uh, updated as to the developments as they come. Uh, at the last SIMPA board meeting, they, they, they provided an update and I actually talked uh, with SIMPA after the meeting at some length to, to better understand what they're looking for. Uh, and they're really interested in contracting out with members to get some additional generation. Uh, they have three or four, they have four uh, that, that are strongly interested and then uh, we're listed as a potential interested in it as well. The, the new uh, way that they're looking at approaching this is offering uh, a capacity payment of $7 per KW month. Uh, to put that in context, uh, the renewals that occurred on the quick start contract, which we have for unit seven was at three. So it's a significant bump up based on wholesale uh, economics that are going on. At seven bucks per KW month uh, makes it very interesting uh, for, uh, I think for Princeton uh, as a potential, uh, at, if at least hedge, if not a way to help um, manage uh, rates going forward by providing another sort of income stream. Um, and uh, in conversations with Simpa, they're also um, very open to working with the membership and partner in partnership to figure out what makes sense and what doesn't. There, there was a lot of, um, hey, we're willing to talk, uh, which I thought was really good. So to me, there were two things that I, I got out of the last SIMPA meeting, which is uh, I think a, a reasonable uh, financial reimbursement uh, plus a willingness to look at um, the contract in ways that doesn't put us at a disadvantage. Now, if we, and, and, and on top of that, uh, I, I would also point out that um, we did hit a summer peak um, a while ago at 14 megawatts and our current power plants at 12. So we are shy uh, uh, during those uh, those uh, extreme months, you know, that that one to 2% per year kind of number. Uh, we if, if there was an issue, we couldn't carry the town. Um, I, I've been less concerned about uh, the, the you know, the reliability side of it because of the uh, cap plan that we're putting in place, which gives us a very robust distribution system. So we can, if we lose a substation, we'd be able to back feed multiple directions. So then we're looking at a much more major event. Um, but really uh, with the way things are going, I I'm looking at it more as an economic decision. But uh, when it comes to adding generation, that's a pretty uh, complex question to answer if it makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, th there's a couple of scenarios where uh, we might want to, we might be able to add to the existing footprint of our power plant. Uh, we might want to do more of what's called a cat in a box, but a, a, a small, smaller, smallish. Uh, May I please interrupt, please, please? Uh, could you? Uh, well, let's, let's I'm asking, let's... please. I'm asking, please. Okay, go ahead, Commissioner Schwartz. All right. This conversation happened when SIMPA was here last October, not recently. And I asked them about adding attrition to uh, our supply. And the the answer I got from, I, I believe it was Dave, I, I'm not sure now because I haven't seen him for a while. He said, oh, so you're only interested in your own territory. 
No, my response was, is that this would be an ongoing feed and source of replenishment to subsidize the, the fact that they can't supply what they're doing. And at that point in time, we're at 10 and 11, Meg, and now we're at 12, and now we're hitting 14. So the questions that the manager is asking right now, this commissioner is asking, why didn't we act on that back then? Because now it's like, it's too late. Where are the funds to do this? Where are the funds to improve ourselves? Why do we have this, this in injection of new lines and everything else, but we have a generation plant that could fortify a lot more people. And if we ever had a dramatic consequence that we would be self-supporting, right now, the way I see it, we're two meg under. That was my question then, and Keith, what you're doing right now, excuse me, Mr. Manager, what you're doing right now is repeating the question that I asked two years ago. And I'm not running the place. I'm just looking at it from 30,000 feet up. Okay, you want to continue? Yeah, uh, it, 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 but um, so, uh, trying to think where I was at. Um, so, uh, Again, in, in, in what, what I've seen from Simple over the last year is uh, an increase in the amount, uh, in the value of what they're willing to pay in terms of a new quick start agreement. Um, we are getting a, a better understanding of how that fits in with the MISO wholesale rules. And Simple is, is showing a little bit more of a willingness to negotiate with the membership. Um, I remember when I had my first conversations with Simpa, and this is these are long term discussions that we have. Sure. Um, you know, we, 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 uh, utilities we do think in terms of decades, um, and, and so it, it does take time to work through the entire process. Mm -hmm. um, and at the time, I, I remember a couple of years ago, the response from Simpa was, "Well, the members should have some skin in the game." In which case, it was, "Well, why should our ratepayers subsidize?" Other yeah, ratepayers. Exactly. So we we have had those conversations over the last couple of years. What I'm sensing uh, in, in the conversation I've had in, in terms of where the market is at right now is more flexibility with a higher financial reimbursement than what we had even a year ago. That changes the decision uh, or changes yeah. the ability to look at that. Correct. So I, I, again, I was having a couple of conversations with with, with Sipa on this. And the, the timing issue was of concern to me. If they had four members who were pledging uh, a certain number of megawatts, I asked flat out, you know, is, will, will they cut this off? Are we too late? And uh, Simpa's response to me last week was absolutely not. They would ra much rather be long in generation than short because short is always bad. Yeah. Um, so they'd rather have extra. And the second point of that is they do have four members coming in. They have about 14 megs that they need, they want to get a lot online in the 28 to 2028 to 2030 scenario. But the low growth doesn't stop there. It keeps going. So even actually it would be very beneficial uh, if, if Princeton was lagging a little bit on this because then they could stage in the generation that they need as the load grows. Mm -hmm. So uh, again, I was very concerned about all of those timing issues, capacity issues. I didn't want to do a whole lot of work and have simply turn around and say, well, we got what we need. We're good. And I got the complete opposite message from them last week, okay. which is, no, if, if you guys are at all interested and, and we really want to work with you and help you do all of that, as we look forward beyond 2030 in terms of how we meet our obligations to the entire grid. So I found all of that extremely encouraging, mm -hmm. uh, going in the right direction that I think, uh, which has the potential, um, I'm not, uh, you know, like I said, it's a very complex question, but has the potential for capturing some benefits for our ratepayers under under some of these uh, changing conditions. So the other major question that uh, is, is going to have to be answered is how does any new generation affect our air permit? Because the last thing any of us want to do is put in a new generation resource and have the MPCA come back and say, okay, now that you have one new generator, you're, entire, you're no longer grandfathered in for your old units and everything needs to be brought up to the new source performance standards. Mm -hmm. 
If that happens, that would be very detrimental. I mean, we would have to shut the power plant down at yes. that point because we the, the economics just don't make sense to invest that much in higher this, tax. This, Mr. Projects. Vice Chair, I'm sorry again. I'm sorry again, but the pollution that our current engines put out will have to be replaced at some point in time anyway. So what you're doing, uh, Manager Butcher, is you're just stumbling on your own words. This system has to change and it has to change over time. And that's what I said earlier. Uh, yeah, I, I'll just, can I, uh, Mr. Sh Commissioner Schwartz, um, I disagree with, you know, I, I appreciate that you have an opinion on this, but you know, at the time when we looked at this before, it was going to affect our rate payers and we would have to subs subsidize the grid if, if we were to look at something like that. And I'm not, I'm not willing to vote for our rate payers to subsidize the rest of SIMPA. Um, if, if now SIMPA's starting to change their tune a little bit, it sounds like from what, that's what I gathered that, you know, maybe they won't uh, be looking at having us subsidize our rate payers subsidize this additional generation, but I will never uh, agree with you, Mr. Uh, Commissioner Schwartz, on, on uh, having our rate payers uh, subsidize uh, new generation for the rest of SIMPA. And Commissioner Erickson, I will again state my statement. I am not asking rate payers to do this. But at some point in time, somebody bought a wrench, somebody bought a motor, somebody started this, somebody did something, somebody put gas in the engine, somebody started it, somebody had lunch and they came back and put oil in it. We have to reinvest in Princeton that this city, and I have been in this business and this town for 65 years, does not reinvest in itself. And it's ready for everyone to come and just limp along and, and do what it's doing. We have, I feel, the best manager of Princeton Public Utilities that we could have, all right? And I think that the commission is the utmost fantastic informed people. You guys, whoever that guy's thing covers, have not understood a word I've said. You have misconstrued it. You misunderstand it, and then you come back and attack it. I am 100% for the best rate that the rate payers can get, and then everybody can just echo, go to Princeton, go to Princeton, go to Princeton. And Michelle, if you're still there, I don't know why the city wouldn't be on this. Instead of us paying you a pilot, you should be involved with giving us money to, to improve what's going on and what we're trying to do. I don't know where this tit and tat came from. I, I do know where it came from because, Dan, you started it. And maybe Keith did. I don't know. But I want the best rate for everybody to do what they can do. I don't want signs. I don't want politics. I don't want this, that, or the other thing. I want to give a rebate to people. In fact, when we come up on to uh, 2333, you're going to hear a whole different language from me again. I'm done. Commissioner Schwartz, I, I, think, I think where the problem is, I don't think you're understanding that this additional generation, when we first talked about it, was actually going to be subsidized by the Princeton PUC ratepayers if under the what under the proposal they were talking about. I Commissioner think Erickson, I do understand that. I do understand that. I do understand that. I do understand that. They had to, they we can do it as a group. There's some cities in SIMPA that don't have a single generation plant. And they're just fine. Um, Your but key, Mr. For, us, for us to have ad generation subsidized by our ratepayers is, you know, it's I've not never asked for that, Commissioner Erickson. I've never asked for that, and I never will. We need to expand just as if your business grows, you need to expand. You buy the building next to yourself, you buy another truck, you need to expand. That is part of the progression of prosperity and service that is made for the city. 
But again, buying those things with our ratepayers' money is not something I'm going to go into. I'm not to. buying out anything. I'm improving the system. Are you saying that we never, ever replace our engines? Do we never, ever replace the oil? Do we never replace the people that are servicing that? It's a constant growing prophecy that has to happen. I just don't understand your, your misunderstanding of this. You have to keep going. If you have a thousand people in the world and you only have 200 service in them, what's going to happen? Point blank. I, you know, it's just, it's that simple. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe you're saying the same thing. I'm just not understanding your uh, angle at it, but I just don't think that that should be on the backs of the of Princeton uh, Public Utilities, that it should be shared. How, Commissioner shared Erickson, if, if you are supplying a public service to somebody, and let me use Elk River as an example, they went from a small building into an absolutely enormous building and they're still out of space. Who paid for that? It was the taxpayers. It's all done for a fact of the matter that you can do the best thing for you by doing what you're doing. We're, we're, the, the fact that this is a nonprofit and the fact that, that Jack and you and I don't get paid, and I'm gonna stop it there. I'm not gonna go into the employees. I'll stop it there. But you, it's all and always for the betterment of the ratepayers. We don't, Elk River did not put up a building that size to destruct or hurt or harm their people. You have to grow. And growing means investing in yourself so you can survive the next year. You know, I was, I apologize. I wasn't at the last meeting, but you don't, you, you know what I, I think? You don't take 3% on top of last year's budget and then 3% on last year's budget. You start with a zero budget and you go through every single department and you start at zero and you refigure it. You want automatic inflation? Guess what? You have 3% to every single budget that you've ever had, and pretty soon you are so far out of it that it doesn't even matter, and then you go, wow, extra money. All right, what should we do? Well, let's give ourselves a raise. All right. Well, I think we're getting off topic of the generation. Not really. Not really if you think about it. If you start where I'm talking about and what we just discussed, Dan, and maybe I should not say that. Uh, yes. Um, so excuse me, I don't mean to interrupt, but uh, Mr. Schwartz, since you can't see me, I do have a two o'clock, so I am going to depart the meeting. I just wanted to let you know that. I appreciate you, Michelle, very much. Uh, on the uh, so uh, on the generation topic, um, like I mentioned, it's a complex question regarding. Uh, financial uh, impacts, siting, uh, the air permit, uh, capacity, a whole, a whole slew of pretty complicated uh, issues, some that are, are complementary and some that are, may actually uh, kind of contradict each other. Um, it's not, uh, in order to be able to make a decision as to whether the investment in new generation uh, fits in with what we want as a community, uh, I am suggesting that the commission uh, conduct a feasibility study um, before, uh, because ultimately, if you're going to build generation, we're looking at several million dollars in bonding activities. And so there's cash flow analysis that would need to be done. We need to evaluate whether or not it impacts our air permit immediately or not, um, and, and, and get some input from that. DGR has done these kind of uh, new, <clears throat> new resource feasibility studies for other municipals. So I would like to get a proposal from them to evaluate whether under under the under the seven dollar per KW month um, offering uh, that that simply was put out there, if that's uh, how that would fit in with us, if we thought we could 
um, break even, make money, lose money, but at least provide some information to the commission to make a, a, an economic decision on uh, that sort of investment. So I, I am looking for the commission to, for your blessing to uh, get a proposal and bring that before the commission to see see what you think. Okay. Yeah, you have to start there. Yeah, and I just I can't answer that question. I I really need yeah. to have DGR to go because a lot of it is where does it integrate in with the yeah. grid and where do you have capacity? Where don't you? How does it fit in with the MISO interconnect? Some pretty pretty involved engineering work has to happen. Commissioner Schwartz, do you have any input on that? I think that is the smartest way to go. So we have actual information and input on what we can do. And if you look at my application from three and a half years ago, I stated on that application with good information, I can make solid information decisions and not afraid to challenge anyone or to be challenged. So that's fine with me. Okay, I, and I agree also. So I think okay. I think that's a blessing uh, in, in my eyes. All right. Um, 6E, uh, 2024 rate options, memo 23-33. Uh, yeah, Mr. Vice Chair, I, I uh, provided uh, this update to the commission last month um, with, uh, you know, DGR had uh, talked about con continuing on with the rate study that the commission had been approved or had approved. I suggested for DGR to run a couple of different scenarios to give the commission some bounds to understand how this impacts future, uh, future uh, cash balances and, and account balances. Uh, so, uh, again, this is in front of, of the commission again to see what you want to do in terms of uh, an electric rate uh, change for next year. Uh, and, uh, and and then also, you know, I am recommending that regardless, um, given all the changes uh, happening uh, around the 2028 20, to 2030 time frame, that I anticipate doing a, a brand new rate study. This is just merely kind of a checkup. But... Um, uh, Looking for what the commission wants to do for rates. Uh, and, and like I said, I've got three options there. Uh, doesn't mean that you can't come up with uh, something on your own, but the, those were the scenarios that we ran. Oh. Any uh, questions? Well, I don't know. I'm an old timer. I like to steady it and go. So I like number three for that reason primarily. Um, you recall from a prior uh, elected position at the county level, we made a nice headline in the paper by doing zero levy increases for a couple of years. And uh, the only thing you offer there is you turn around and fight yourself and fuck down. Mm -hmm. You have to, uh, at minimum, maintain a normal. Uh, Inflationary budget. Uh, and granted, we I think we find some expenses here and there. I mean, what I've been looking ahead of this. But you still have to have, there's something you have, you don't control. You know, for the health insurance, stuff like that. You, you have no control over that. So, oh, so this is easy, guys. So it was the rate study that DGR did yeah, for us. Is correct. The study predicted a 3% rate increase for 2024 for cash flow reasons. Uh, the checkup was to go back and look at our revenues and expenses and make sure everything's tracking, which it is. Okay. So uh, their inclination was, hey, full steam ahead. Uh, everything's going according to plan. Uh, but, it, you know, it, it, it's, it's, uh, it's the commission's prerogative each year as to what you want to do. Okay. So, when I look at that, you're out here. I mean, nobody can, no one's going to crystal ball. We don't know what's going to happen in 2029. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You want to be, you know, be prepared. Right. And, and, and I will point out that, uh, that part of what's driving a lot of that in 2030 is the is the fact that Rochester and Austin are no longer going to be SIPA members. That's why there's a lot of uncertainty sure. in, in what's going on. Um, there is some conversations about Austin not leaving. And if that happens, um, 
simply predicting that they won't have to do the uh, rate increases that they are anticipating at the moment. So there is, like I said, I'm merely pointing out that there's, uh, it is a projection. There's a lot of uncertainty if the, the world can change, but at least in the short term, um, we feel pretty confident that, you know, uh, again, uh, you know, doing no rate increase sometimes just kind of puts it off and, and have, um, have have larger ones later on. Um, but um, it, and some of it just comes down to a philosophy and just to make sure that when we get to, uh, if you look at the graphs, you can see that there's a, a drop off in some of the balances in the 27 to 28 range. And just want to make sure we have enough, you know, built up mm -hmm. uh, at that time so that um, we're able to pay for that phase of the project. Uh, and if you don't do rate increases, then uh, you will run into, the concern is you will run into some balance issues in, in, in about four years. Commissioner Schwartz, do you have any comment? I have a whole bunch of comments, but I'm tired of, of talking. Um, I think when I look at those graphs, it's absolutely insane on the different graphs that we see. I agree with option three and Commissioner Edmonds, study as you go, but when I do all of my studies, I come up with 0.9. We don't need 0.1. I know it's a small thing, but you know what? A dollar matters in somebody's pocket. I would, I would go for a 0.8 or 0.9 increment uh, option three and then shut it off so 20, nine and 33 don't even jack you're right it, who in the heck knows what we're going to be doing or wearing or flying or driving in 29 so for us just to do the steady as you go jack i love you I, I i always have but that's to me i don't just go along with the additional increase i'm going either a point eight or point nine and i would do option three and block off 29 and 33 because it, it's not it's not real. Uh, Mr. Vice Chair, if I could real quick, uh, the question I'm wanting to answer is what to do for 2024. I, I what I'm trying to do on the table is not to say that the commission is approving these rate increases in those future years. We're just saying based on our predictions of what we know today, this is what this means. Oh. If you do this decision now. The question in front of the commission is just simply, what do you want me to do come January 1st? What, okay, when we yeah, talk about yeah. what do we do come January 1st, 2025? That's a discussion that this commission will have at the sure. next budget cycle. So it might and, be. And I, I, I appreciate that question. I really do appreciate that follow up question. My follow up question to the question is how much cash do, do we have on hold right now? And what, how does that compare to the last three years? And then with the CDI, compared to the last three years? What's our debt to the last three years? I would like to take a photo of this moment in time and see those comparisons. Because if we don't look at the past, I can't tell you what we should be doing in the future. Well, isn't that, Commissioner Schwartz, isn't that why, why we hired DGR though, is to come up with this uh, and do that study for us? But the reality, Commissioner Erickson, is the proof in the pudding. What right. numbers did they use? They have oh, those numbers. Right. Now, did we come back with that and say, yeah. no, no, yes? Isn't that what this, what this uh, Correct. Um, is that so what the, you do the, is update these then? The, the update, uh, I'm just, I'm reading from the memo. Uh, DGR reviewed our 2022 audited data as well as our 2023 year to date, which would have been through June or July. I want to say. Okay. So that's part of the reason we did the checkup was to use sure. the most current data that we had that we didn't have when the original rate study was completed. So there's okay, Keith, that, Keith, that information, Manager Butcher, that information is very helpful to me so I can make the decision that I want to make. Um, I would like to go back another year and a half, but that's not going to happen. Uh, I would stick to a uh, recommendation of the 0.9, um, which puts something back in the rate pairs. Option three, point nine out one. Okay. Um, we're not active. How, how well, well I, Mr. I, Schwartz, what, how did you, what was the difference when you were doing your 
calculations between 0.9 and 0.1? What was the dollar amount? 0.1 percent. Oh, what was the cash amount or the dollar amount? Well, present? okay, Dan. So, what what's your electric bill? Tell me what your electric bill is, and I'll tell you the difference to each ratepayer. No, for the yearly budget for the PUC. It would be 0.1%. I think that we should be giving people money back. Instead of increasing rates, and our budget should not be up 3%. It should not be up 1%. I think if you're talking about the budget itself, it should start at zero. And the manager should sit down with every other manager and say, this is what we're doing. Not that we needed a backhole this year, and which we grabbed and found money for. I just don't like that. Dan, I know you don't like that either. You just all of a sudden sign the budget, but we find ways. That's garbage money. That should be going back to the ratepayers. Uh, Mr. Vice Chair, if I could if I could share some if I could say something. Sure. Um we know that because of the capital plan that's been approved, we know we have some significant expenditures coming in both phase two and phase three. The purpose of doing a three percent rate increase is to build those cash reserves to pay for phase two and phase three. This is a revenue adjustment with the idea of building up the CIF, the rate stabilization fund, and the cash reserves, because we know we have this major expense coming. Mm -hmm. That's different than saying we're increasing budgets 3%. We're not doing that. This is a question of, do you wanna do a 3% so we can start getting some of that money now? Do a 1% so we can start doing some of that money now because we know that the cap plan has been approved and we're gonna to continue to move forward with. Or do you spread that out over a couple more years? But just because we're doing a 3% rate increase here on the revenue side does not mean that we're doing a 3% increase on the budget side. We're trying to build but that up- that means your cash is going down. Pardon? That means your cash is going down. If you don't increase the increase of the income and your expenses go up 3%, your margin has reduced. If I could, if I could point to the, the, the graphs uh, for, option, for, for all three options, you, you will see that um, under the different scenarios uh, that the cash and cash equivalents increase uh, well, I'm sorry, I'm looking at the wrong year. Um, what we're trying to do is get those to have a little bit more cash. So when you start looking at 27, 28, for example, if you look at option three, you can see that the balance on the rate stabilization fund in 2028 and 2029 are, it's not zero, but it's very close to that. I want to say it was like 300,000. Are you looking at the debt service ratio versus the rate change? No, I'm looking at the, um, not the debt service ratios, the, uh, the the second set of graphs, which looks at the cash balances on the cash and cash equivalents, the rate stabilization fund and the capital improvements fund. What, to me, where the issue is coming up is when you get to fiscal year 28 and fiscal year 29, and you see the rate stabilization fund essentially being depleted uh, to pay for that cap plan. So the, the question is, what's the best way to, to, to make sure we maintain that balance in years in which we know that there's gonna be a large expenditure because the intent was, uh, as we start getting into phase three, we're gonna be spending more cash in the third bonding scenario. So it, it, some of this is getting set up for future years. And the question is just, how much do you wanna do now? How much do you wanna do later? How do you wanna phase it in? I, I mean, in theory, uh, again, I, I put the scenario in there to, to help give the commission uh, information to, to, to make a good decision. In theory, you don't have to do a rate increase, but that means I'm just not storing up cash for that eventual expenditure that we know is coming. And we're trying to balance, uh, balance that so we don't get to year 2027 and all of a sudden have to do a, uh, a major rate increase, which if you look at the table, um, 
we would be looking at 3% in 2028 um, and uh, 3% and even 4% uh, potentially in 2032 as we as we project things out. Um, I, I, you know, so it's, it's a commission decision, but I, I wanted, I just want to make a distinction that this is about revenues and, and, and where you want to be financially. It, it does not necessarily mean the budget's going up 3%. This is what we're trying to do is we're trying to manage the cap plan and, and our future investments in the system and minimize rate shocks mm -hmm. to our customers. At least that's the information. I mean, that's the way I was looking at it, but again, yeah. it's up to the commission as to what you want to do. Thanks for that clarification. Uh, is there any other discussion on? Well, and, and going back to my comment, the reason we hire people like Keith is because my, I'll pay for myself, I'm not smart enough to understand the total working. You know, we get the, the picture, we trust our manager to do what is best for the commission. And then he brings it to the So I look at if one percent of the Teddy Ishigola, the old farm way, I guess, call what you want to. Again, I didn't have the, I, the information I'm getting now maybe altered my thoughts a little bit. It's, oh, yeah. Okay. My comment, I, I guess I'll give my comment. My comment is uh, um, you know, we hired professionals to do a rate study. They did an update. They gave their recommendations. They provided the information that we had ample time to look over and study. And, and uh, now is the time to ask questions on that. I, I, I understood it. I didn't have any questions on it. I spent some time looking it over. Um, if we adopt you know, one of those plans, then the next year we'll have a chance to have DJR update that once again and see if if uh, one of how that plan affected it. And so, uh, you know, um, after looking at it, I, I agree, Jack, that that steady as she goes plans kind of make sense. So we, if um, if next year we're ahead of schedule, maybe it's zero next year. Maybe it, you know, but but having to do two or three next year because we got behind doesn't sit well with me either. So um, I, I, I'm i going to recommend that we follow DGR's recommendation and uh, their expertise. And and uh, I'm going to recommend option three. Yeah, and, and I just, my favorite was to withdraw my original comment and just gave me a little more insight and information. On, and number two would be uh, I think that's our period, but, uh, but yeah, I, I'll stick to my, I, I would recommend uh, number three. Are we, um, is there a motion? Do we, do we, do we need a motion? I'll, 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 hey, 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 how about further discussion? Well, I would ask that after the motion. Uh, yes, I do need a motion. Oh, okay. Okay, I'll sit. I'll. I'm gonna go get a glass of warm milk. I'll let me know when you come back. Um, I would need a motion, and uh, given the discussion, just a clarification. When you say option three, what number do you want me to use? The the recommendation from DGR, which so is so the one percent. But I didn't. I didn't make a motion. I was just saying, giving my comment. Yeah. From there. Yeah. But I'll entertain a motion that. On um, um, rate options memo twenty three dash thirty three. Okay, and I will uh, make the motion to go with option three. Okay, as presented. Jack, I thought you were option two. No, <laughs> no, I was option one or not option three from the get go. I only. All right, that. so so you're changing your vote. All right, all right, that's mm -hmm. fine. I'm not changing anything. So it's I, fine. I, it's fine. It's fine. Uh, don't put words in my mouth. Thank you, Mr. Schwartz. Do we have a motion uh, uh, to accept uh, option three of one percent? Yeah, the reasonable. Sure. Seven 
I'm making the motion to. Yeah, that's why I said we have a motion. Is there, we have that, okay. Yeah, we have a motion. Is there a second? I'll second that. Any further discussion? Commissioner Schwartz, any further discussion? I don't think it should be 1%. I think it should be between eight and nine. And I think we're just fine with that. Okay. With I'm my gonna, studies that I've done. I'm, I'm going to uh, go with uh, our experts that we hired, DGR. And um, I haven't heard any information that would that would make me change that their position. So um, is there any further discussion? Okay, seeing none, all in favor signal by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Aye. Okay, motion carries two to one. Um, moving on to 6 f 2024 b and budget discussion uh yes mr vice chair so in your packet is the uh again this was introduced last month um i didn't uh get any uh i don't i didn't get any comments or feedback so uh, again I'm, I'm reposting it uh again to see if there are any questions or comments here uh uh, again, typically what we've done is proposed at the October meeting, uh, reviewed at the November meeting, and approved at the December. Uh, that being said, last year, uh, the commission was comfortable with the fee schedule as proposed, and so they did approve it in November. So it's really commission's prerogative uh, where you want to go. Uh, but uh, if there are comments or, or, or questions, uh, it's, that's why it's here, so we can have that discussion. Yeah. Um. Commissioners, has everybody had time to look this over? And, and if so, is there any discussion? I, yeah, we discussed last month. The uh, changes are very minimal, but there was one note that there is. Uh, I'm, I'm ready to act on it. Uh, okay. Commissioner Schwartz, any comments? Any discussion? I guess my comment is that it really doesn't matter what my position is. You three are going to do what you're going to do anyway. So that's where I stand. Okay. So I'll entertain a motion to. Uh, Tudica. Tudica. 2024 B and budget memo 23 34. I'm going to move to approve the uh, 2024 B schedule. Uh, presented. And I'll second. Any further discussion? Okay, seeing none, all in favor signal by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Aye. Motion carries two to one. Uh, memo 23 39, proposed 2024 budget. Uh, yes, Mr. Vice Chair. Well, uh, again, this is. Uh, in the packets last month. Uh, it's an uh, overview of, of looking at the budget. Uh, it does, uh, again, without having uh, a, a motion in place, I did use the pre-approved rate study numbers of 3%, so the revenues are based on that. I would have to update that to 1% and bring back a budget to the commission next month with okay. those changes. So I would recommend not approving this at this time because the revenues will go down, uh, which means that the uh, cash flow balances will be less because uh, it'll be a 1% increase instead of a 3% increase. But regardless, um, you can see uh, where the um, kind of how the, the assumptions are in breakouts in terms of revenues and expenses, as well as a listing of the major projects. Uh, the, the major projects for 2024 has remained the same. The only difference is I did add in the 7th Avenue Seesaw 4 project uh, which was part of the feasibility report, which the commission approved earlier this meeting, uh, just to make sure that it's it's very clear as to what that uh, what those financial impacts are as well. Uh, I guess, but uh, so I do have to update everything, and I'll I'll bring that in front of the commission for for next month. Uh, but otherwise, I am available to answer any questions or, or comments that folks might have on the budget. Okay. Uh, so the, the general manager's recommendation is that we wait another month before we uh, make a motion on this. 
Um, Mr. Schwartz, do you agree with that? No comment. Okay. Hey, obviously, uh, you have the number you have to work with. Well, I'll just write it out to you. Yeah. 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 Uh, or exchange or whatever. Yeah. I don't want to. Yeah. I don't want to make a, a decision. I don't have the exact number, so. Uh, mm. Okay. I guess I'm gonna just. Okay. But otherwise, I mean, if there are other questions, the main thing is gonna be yeah. the revenue is gonna be so a little if, different with part of your other other the, side of it. Okay. Yeah, the, the yes, it's the revenues that right. will, will decrease yeah. uh, based off of a one percent instead of three percent okay. change. Um, the expenses um, uh, again, it, it's my best guess as to you know based on um, our operations here the the, the last few months of, of 2023 and uh, continuing to provide services to the community. So, sure. but I, I am happy to answer any questions folks might have on on that side of the ledger as well. Mr. Schwartz, do you have any other questions on this budget proposal? I don't necessarily agree with it because, again, I believe that you should start with a zero balance every once in a while, not every year, but every once in a while. You should start from zero and recalculate it instead of adding two or three or four percent every single year because that's runaway inflation and we all know what that's about. And, and I will we all out. look at this every single. Uh, excuse me. Uh, we all look at this every single year and go, yeah, what's what? You know, what's two percent? Yeah, yeah, okay. That's you know, gas went up a buck. Yeah, okay, okay, okay. But you know what? Things go down too, but we never adjust for those things that we um, don't need or use anymore. So sure. that's my comment, Keith. Or somebody is trying to interrupt me, so I'll I'll yield the floor. Uh, it, oh, oh. Oh, I'm sorry. If I may. Well, could, could I? Oh, yeah. I, I'm sorry. I didn't. So, uh, and, and I, I agree with Commissioner Schwartz. So, is uh, Manager Butcher? Could you start from zero and and uh, put the budget together that way? Um, I, 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 I think I do do that. Okay. I, I don't. I don't think it's fair to say I just take last year's number and increase it three percent. Uh, if you look at the, okay. the the tables in the memo. Um, it, again, in, in an effort to try to give the commission uh, to be transparent and give the commission information that it wants, I did provide columns uh, in, on both the electric and water side that shows what the variance is from the 23 budget, uh, as well as the variance from what uh, our software is estimating as our year end balances. What you'll see is if you look at the electric side, um, power purchase. Uh, the, our purchase power is going up. That's SIPA's cost. Remember, there was a 10% rate increase at the end of 2022. Yep. Um, so there, there are some changes due to that. The production plan increases uh, from the 23 budget is only 0.86%. The distribution expenses proposal for 2024 is decreased by 0.43%. The customer accounts budget from invariance from the 23 budget is down 2.89%. The, the GNA is up 8.43% uh, for total operating expense at 6.71%. But I will point out that that is also driven a lot by the fact that the revenue is up 4.33% because you do have to, I mean, whatever we sell, we have to buy. So mm -hmm. if, if I'm assuming more sales next year, because Glen Meadows coming in, Rum River Residential Suites is continuing to get filled. Um, that is naturally going to, to to draw up our purchase power as well. So it's not just inflationary, but it is higher throughput and, and greater sales. Higher sales, probably. correct. So so I do make you know again it's you know I, I do the best I can. They, they, these are just projections, but uh, you can look through those numbers and you'll see that I just don't simply take twenty twenty three numbers and. At three percent to them, I actually no. But Keith, if if I may, then what you're calculating is, and this is the information that I would always like to see every single year. Uh, so you're roughly saying two point two seven three percent of increased sales from last year. Um, that that would be accurate, correct? I don't know. I'd have to run the numbers. Well, we're in a meeting, so. 
and, and I'm happy to go back. I, and... I'm going from the numbers that you just told me, and I actually did it in my head, and that's what I come up with. I'm happy to go back and, and provide some analysis if the commission would like and, and sure. run a scenario, assuming it. Keep in mind, the, these are budget numbers. So um, what I kind of do is I, again, I don't know what next summer is going to be for sales. What next, I mean, the weather is just so dependent on this. I, I tend to try to look at what revenues are in the last couple of years to kind of figure out load shapes and it's my best. As, as Commissioner Erickson always explained very so much that uh, transparency is everything. Uh, when you make a statement, these are, you know, not or should be public numbers, whatever. Uh, there is no, it is what it is. And this is what it cost us. And unless we're paying ourselves, which the commission doesn't get anything, unless we're paying ourselves too much, which I don't think that's the case either then we just are trying to fine tune this thing in the best way that we can and give our ratepayers the best service, the best electricity and that we can. That's my statement. And I would contend that that being done. Well, it sounds like you're gonna you could provide us with. with uh, yeah, I, I'll I'll try to break out and, and normalize some things based on the last couple of years, best I can. Okay. Uh, you know, like I said, uh, it, it, it's it's uh, normalizing for weather is is always difficult and on the especially on the electric. But there's well, an average. Well, there's always an average. Commissioner Schwartz, is there any other information you'd like with, for uh, next meeting on this? I would like to know the details. I would like to know the averages. I'd like to know and understand the detail of, instead of saying I don't have that information in front of me. Uh, this is the eagle eye that we are appointed to, the three commissioners. We don't get paid. We get a stipend, whatever that is. It's so minuscule. But we are the people that are appointed by the city council to stand 30,000 feet above and look down and then our voice should be heard instead of, uh, what should I say, misrepresented by certain people. That's that's all I have to say. All right, let's uh, move on then. Uh, unless you had anything to uh, work on that. Um, okay, so uh, six. G was uh, service territory negotiations. Service territory negotiations. Uh, yes, Mr. Vice Chair. Um, so, uh, you know, we did uh, have a closed session last month on the uh, discussions over service territory negotiations. Uh, the commission did give approval for us to uh, work with Current Compass uh, to to help us out in that because the uh, negotiations have taken longer than than I had hoped. Um, Current Compass is, is is willing to, but right now they've been more in an advisory role. Um, I would really like to have them take the lead on, on negotiating with East Central Energy. Um, I, I think it would be a good way to help kind of kickstart it. Um, I, I feel a, a little bit at a, um, I, I just think it would help uh, to have, have somebody who's more of a negotiator involved in that process. Uh, current Compass is happy to do that, um, but uh, they don't want to run into a situation where East Central Energy uh, won't talk to them because they're not officially a, an employee uh, or a member of the commission. Um, so they are asking uh, if the commission is, is okay with that and would give them the authority to negotiate on behalf of, of the utility and the commission uh, with the central energy. Doesn't mean that they can make a deal. I mean, they would have to bring anything back to the commission for, for approval, but just to give them the authority to, to, to negotiate uh, with, with with ECE. Okay. And, and I think I could really use the help. Might it be better to have a, a third party doing that so that there's not the uh, pretense of having a horse in the race, so to speak? I'm uh, kind of hoping that. I'm, I'm hoping that. Um, you know, and it's one of those things where I don't want to, I don't want to have her. If, if you get your attorney involved, then all of a sudden they want to get their attorney involved and the whole thing can escalate pretty quickly. Yeah. Um, this is a way to try to get it moving forward. So, so are they a, a service that has done this before? Uh, yes, he, he he's currently doing it with uh, several other 
municipal utilities at the moment okay. with both uh, uh, negotiating with both co-ops as well as investor-owned utilities. And what's the cost? Uh, his hourly rate was in the proposal. Okay. Uh, so it, it, oh, it would just be time. Okay. Uh, so uh, the proposal that uh, the commission approved a couple months ago was uh, uh, 150 bucks an hour. Yeah. Oh, okay. For, for whose attorney? Whose attorney is that? Yeah, they're not an attorney. Uh, it's Current Compass, who uh, we contracted with a couple of months ago to help us with our service territory negotiations. So it's All just right, taking. Thank you. thank you for the clarification. It's difficult to put an hourly number on that. And it's not going to be, I mean, it's not much. It's just. Yeah. Well, yeah, and in the previous discussion, we did talk about, you know, total of 30 to 40 hours as part of this. And then if once, you know, once we start getting close to that, it would come back to the commission. Okay. So that that was that was all included. This is more of just expanding, giving them the authority to actually do the negotiations oh, okay. as opposed to. So we've already, we've already heard them in this matter. It's Correct. just letting them talk directly without Correct. being shut down. Correct. We just want to make sure we have okay. a lot of ducks in our That's Okay, yeah. thanks for the clarification on that. Yeah. Any, uh, you have any questions, Commissioner Swartz? No. Okay. Um, I'll entertain a motion to uh, approve. Or to allow, allow current compass to negotiate on our behalf. To way. allow current compass to negotiate on our behalf. Is there a number? No, there isn't. Uh, no. It would just okay. be All right, is there a second? I'll second it. So we have a motion and a second to allow current compass to negotiate on our behalf with uh, East Central Energy. Um, is there any further discussion? Yeah. All in favor, signal by saying aye. 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 Okay. Uh, 6G communications. Um, do you want to go ahead, Commissioner Schwartz, on that? Your comments? Um, I guess what I would like to do is uh, reference the transparency, uh, transparency of of the commission and the managers and, and the uh, staff. Um, Commissioner Erickson, you you've made it very clear that transparency is your number one thing. I'm going to ask you. It, it's really unfair because I can't see your face and look into your eyes, uh, nor can I have Jack or, or Keith, <clears throat> but have you had any vocal one-on-one -on -one through any technology device with the manager of Princeton Public Utilities in the last 90 days? Have you had without the other commissioners being updated of that communication? I hear silence, so Jack, I'm going to ask you the same question. Have you had any communication in full transparency? Have you had any communication with the commissioner or the manager with Princeton Public Utilities, Keith Butcher? Have you had any communication verbally in the last 90 days? I have spoken with uh, Mr. Butcher. Not as a council person, but as a commissioner, I'm stating. I am speaking to Mr. Butcher. We, any one of us can speak to Mr. Butcher individually. Not if he does not fulfill In, that same conversation to us. And I said, yes, but I also wear two hats. And I do communicate with Mr. Butcher. I'm not asking about your second hat. You understand what I'm saying? Question. You have to disclose, Mr. Butcher, I'm going to ask you this question. Have you had any communication with any of the commissioners vocally in the last 90 days without referring to the other commissioners on what was said? Um, well, you guys are guilty. You guys are all guilty of open meeting laws. That's a pretty bold accusation, sir. 
Yeah, I'll, I'll answer that. Yes, I've had communications with Mr. Butcher, of course. Uh, you know, I've got to come in and sign the, the, uh, the documents that, that need to be signed on a monthly basis. And uh, what's, uh, you know, open communication or open reading laws is when two or more of, a, of the commissioners um, have communication about uh, PUC uh, policy. No, see, 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 Commissioner Erickson, this is where I have to interrupt you because before when we've had a meeting and I told you, I explained to you the situation on with the chairperson speaking to the manager and the manager asked questions and he calls the chair and says, so do you have any questions about the upcoming meeting that's going to happen in 30 minutes? No? Okay, explain this. Yes, I do. Okay, do that. You were livid you wanted transparency so now you're doing exactly what you said you should not be doing rick and and so you're doing exact where's the transparency here i want to get down to this because this whole thing is bull crap yeah i i i did uh ask for a discussion on that so, and so you're guilty you are guilty of the open law meeting uh, as you just stated, and Jack said he stated, uh, Keith, uh, what is your statement? My statement is that that's not what the open meeting law is. The open meeting are you are you are you speaking to the other commissioners without updating me? Because I haven't talked to you for about a hundred days. Have you spoke to other commissioners about any subject matter whatsoever, and you have not replied or gave me information on that? Mr. That's Richard, the question. I want you to answer that question. I think it's important to understand that the open meeting law is to prevent. I want you to answer the question. Have you had any communication with Mr. Erickson, Commissioner Edmonds, we, on we, we, anything during this last hundred days? Any one of us could talk to. Mr. No, we Butcher, can't, Commissioner time. Erickson. No, yeah. we can't. There's nothing. There's nothing in our bylaws that prohibit us. From Did you read it. your policy, Commissioner Erickson? Did you read it? My proposed policy that was never adopted. No, that's that's not even worth the PAI that you spent on it. I, I, I'm not sure what you're talking about, but. I think you're. I am asking that. all three of you on a public voice. Commissioner and Schwartz, had any communications on with each way. other in a private matter without sharing that same communication with myself? So, are you accusing us of? You're not answering my question. Are you accusing? Have you had any communication? Are with you each other. the commissioners of breaking open meeting laws? I'm Mr. asking you individually, have you we've talked all, to, to we've each all, other? We've all answered that question, yes. That we have talked to, to uh, the man, to Mr. Butcher. So are you accusing us of breaking open meeting laws? I simply am asking the question for, I don't know, 12, 14 times. And it's been answered. Do you guys have point. any communication privately about commissioners' information or PUC information? Yes or no? That's all. It's a yes or no. It's not an accusation. It's a can question. I, can I answer that question again? Sure. My answer is no. Not the way you, 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 but that, you know, I, you, you, you said you. earlier, yes. I have spoken with Mr. Butcher numerous times on agenda items and city business as we're in a, as a commissioner and a city council member. So play, I, play this video back and you'll understand my question. As a commissioner, did you or have you had communications? And now you're bringing up that, oh, I wear two hats. That's not what I'm asking, Jack. I'm simply asking the communications that you have. Because Commissioner Erickson, there just seems to be such a, a, a common bond here when you look at the city and you go, 
you know, how does the city council just, they it just, it melts like butter. Yeah, 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 yeah. Boom. It passes. They had to have some inf information prior. That's what you guys are doing. That's what I feel that you're doing. That's what raises this question. Not that I'm implying that you're doing anything behind my back. I'm asking you, have you had any communication with the manager, Keith Butcher, privately without the Keith Butcher sharing that information with me? You can't share it, Jack. You can't share it, Dan. But Keith is withholding information in my belief. It's not an attack, but in my belief that there's not clear communication with the commissioners. I bid you good night. Mr. Vice Chair, um, I, I would just like to make a couple of comments. One is uh, I've communicated a lot via email with mm -hmm. all commissioners. I make sure that it's transparent in my salutation in which it says, good afternoon commissioners, whether it was the employee handbook, whether it was a feasibility study to provide background information to everybody. Um, so there, are, in order for this place to function, there is the need for sharing data and information, mm -hmm. which does happen. The open meeting law is what it is designed to do is to prevent decision-making from occurring <laughs> without public transparency. Commissioners are able to call up and ask questions and get data, and that is perfectly acceptable. Where where lines can be crossed, and we got to be careful of it, is when commissioners privately direct staff, imply certain things should happen, do things like that, without the other commissioners being able to provide input on those. So an informative commission, I think, is very valuable, and I, I do my best to try to share that information. So when you come in and we talk about the employee handbook as an example, it's not just the memo, but you've seen the full thing. So you know what it is I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. um, that it's the decision-making process that the open meeting law and and the, the reason the policy is in place is to prevent staff from feeling like they're 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 being pulled in different directions because individual commissioners might call up and say, well, why don't you go do this or why don't you go do that? Those kind of decisions need to be made here uh, in, in, right. in front of everybody. So yeah. I think there are some nuances that we should yeah. should pay attention. Well, to. and I you know uh, Commissioner Schwartz question come off as if, you know, he, he already had an answer and he said that he wanted an answer. It didn't matter what um, the answer he I had feel like I just want to be, be clear that um, we do have conversations about the commission. I'm not sure, it, you know, I'm not calling the other commissioners to see if, if you've had the same conversations with them. Um, and we can't. My proposal that I had proposed on the communications that we never did vote on was basically to help Commissioner Schwartz because it seemed like he had this ongoing paranoia of being left out of communications. And obviously it's still there as you could see in, uh, um, with that questioning, which I, I don't see it. I just thought, well, that would just be one more thing to assure uh, assure Commissioner Schwartz that there is transparency. And yes, we can, you can't operate a uh, $8 million business without communication between the, the commission and, and the, the manager. Um, you know. Commissioner Erickson, that's exactly my point because when we had that discussion, you were livid, you were absolutely livid when you heard that Keith and I were talking before meetings. And you said, that's not right. That is not right. And now you're doing it. All right. I'm speaking. So uh, that was my proposal. Um, it never got uh, looked into, acted on further. And then, then, it, and then uh, it got into the false accusation, uh, came about of, of manipulating uh, records. And, and then we had the censorship. And so then here we are. So that you know, never got brought to light. And and obviously we're not going to, uh, we're not going to resolve this uh, issue with Commissioner Schwartz, I don't believe, but but yes, you know, uh, the communication has to happen uh, in order to operate this, this business. And uh, um, open meeting laws 
you know, our, our exactly like you stated, it's when there's communication on policies between commissioners that aren't in the meeting and, and, uh, so, so when you're doing it, Commissioner Erickson, it's fine. And when I was doing it, it was taboo. That's what you just said. No, that's not what I said. That's not accurate. No, it is. It is because that's what I'm doing the same thing that you were doing, going in, signing the invoices. And then Keith has a question. He calls me. What about this? What about that? Make sure the meetings go smooth. And you are doing exactly what George Freichel was doing what Henry Fendel was doing, what I was doing, what everybody was doing is you have to have communication. That's what you just got done saying, and I agree with that. But during the meeting when you were censuring me, you said, no, absolutely, you can't do that. No way. So you're, you're tooting two horns. That, that, that has nothing to do with open meeting laws. I, I'm not talking about open meeting laws. I'm talking about communication you that you watch, have watch within. The, I didn't bring the, open meeting, Keith, the manager, the and the you guys. I, I, I guess I don't see this discussion as productive. Um, well, I, apparently you're not a, a um, leader that people thought you were, apparently. I don't know. I, I, I don't know why you see the difference between when I was chair and what now that you're vice chair and you're the head of the lead. You're answering the questions. You're having to talk to Keith and Keith has to talk to you. And, and then Jack steps in and talks to you too. So I don't understand that difference. So I was doing that on your behalf, trying to trying to propose a, something that would help because you seem to have some paranoia being left out of the loop. There's no point in there paranoia or whatever the hell you're saying that there, there is not it's a coup de cas. it's definitely you guys are doing that and it happens with the city council and it happens with the united states congress and senate etc etc you want to do things your way i'm trying to find ways to save the ratepayers money and you can go against me all day long with that i'm on their side you guys may not be. Uh, I, don't, I don't know where you see. I'm not going to sit still for that. But yeah, that's... I can't sit still for that kind of accusation. I've been in this business 20 years. Don't ever talk to me that way. Jack, let me, let me ask you a question, Jack. How many years you've been in this? How many years you've been in that? You'd say that about 15 times a day, every day. Because I have to experience. And I think it's worthwhile. But be realistic. I don't need to listen to this crap. Right. I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. I'll adjourn. I'll second. All in favor, signal by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Aye. Motion carries two.